Wow. So Evan, um, I know you write, uh, at least your last book was on having conversations with your patients about fat. Um, and Steve's talking about uh, saturated fats um, causing issues with confusion and I guess other aspects of dementia. Um, what what do you know about fat and its, its contribution to these types of, of diseases? So you have to look at the basically history of the globe. And what we see is that there's an epidemic of non-communicable diseases that starts at the same time industrial revolution started. And you get an industrialized system where there's an industrialized food system and an industrialized supply chain. And all of that was done with no thought to the health of the population. And it was all done to maximize the output of the various economic interests. And so what happened was a lot of the things that were being done that were bad for health just were done without any thought and became the norm. So we had trans fats, which were the norm because they were hydrogenated vegetable oil and they were cheap. And then we investigated and we found out they raise cholesterol. They cause all kinds of metabolic havoc by causing uh, insulin resistance and they create a bunch of atherosclerosis and vascular disease. So we outlawed them. But saturated fats do the exact same things. There's nothing trans fats do that saturated fats don't do. Saturated fats haven't been outlawed because A, it's difficult to outlaw them. Every living thing has a cell membrane made of fat. And so there is some degree of saturated fat in virtually all life. But also because we needed something to replace the trans fats and all those shelf stable cookies and crackers and pies and vegan ice creams and things like that. So we just use coconut oil and palm oil. The problem is they're just as harmful as far as I can tell. And they have negative effects on the brain, as you've already heard, but they also have severely negative effects on heart health. Um, they're clearly up there with nicotine in terms of their relationship to heart disease. And they're clearly a major contributor to type two diabetes, which is an epidemic state. And there's Great. loads of evidence that they create uh, inflammation inside the hypothalamus that drives excess eating behavior. So that they're also intimately linked to the obesity epidemic that takes place in post-industrial societies that is predictable. And you know, you can say, when did this society industrialize? And then, okay, we'll expect an obesity epidemic about a generation and a half after that happens. So there's really, to me, when I talk to students, I always look for like, where's the counterpoint? And there isn't really much of a counterpoint. If you think trans fats are bad, which they are, then you should also think saturated fats are bad. And we have had basically an industry funded uh, misinformation slash disinformation campaign that's very, very powerful, has plenty of money and has tried to create a cultural mindset that, you know, guys like Hansel Keys and other people who said saturated fat are bad for you were all a bunch of grifters when in fact it's pretty much the exact reverse it's projection basically they claim ansel keys cherry pick while they cherry pick they claim that saturated fats have been exonerated when in fact they've been implicated far more over the last five years in the scientific literature than they had even up until then uh, the primary problem with saturated fats is ceramide production which is a massive negative metabolic actor and ceramide production is unrelated even to cholesterol. So let's say you doubt the cholesterol diet heart hypothesis or whatever. There's still no reason to consume a diet high in saturated fat because of its effect on ceramides. And so good. They... And may I make a comment on Absolutely. the trans fats? Um, Evan, you mentioned trans fats being in hydrogenated oils. True. But uh, a lot of people don't realize a huge quantity of trans fats that's in animal fat. Uh, with it's ruminant true. animals, uh, cows, for instance. And so the milk and the beef have trans fats in them. The trans fats, uh, there's a little difference in the amount of vaccinic and elytic acid, uh, which are both trans fats, but uh, they're very, very similar in their effects and in their composition. And so if you're trying to avoid trans fats, it would be nice to avoid them in animal food as well as in industrial created trans fats, which make up somewhere between 40 and 60% the uh, animal trans fats of the total trans fats in people's diets. 
Yeah, well, once we outlawed the hydrogenated oils, the primary source of trans fats in the diet now are animal products. And, and what was re what replaced the uh, hydrogenated oils? Palm oil primarily, but if not palm oil, coconut oil. The okay. fine coconut oil. Now, palm oil itself is less saturated than coconut oil, but palm kernel oil is almost identical in composition to coconut oil, both very rich in saturated fatty acids, about 90% saturated fats. And usually 65% of the three saturated fats that are most damaging, lauric acid, myristic acid, and palmitic acid. Yeah, palmitic acid takes its name from the palm tree. <laughs> so it's obviously palmitic acid is very prevalent in palm oil, but myristate is probably the most uh, negative uh, saturated fat in terms of per gram, how much metabolic havoc it, it, it causes. Why, why do people think that coconut oil is good for, I mean, not only not bad for them, but good for them to the point where they're putting coconut oil in their coffee to get, you know, to get this fat content for medium chain, um, you know, the MCTs. What, why is that a thing? Aren't, you know, are people, you know, what, what's going to happen as people do that to them? You know, it, it, are they going to have heart disease? Are they going to have, you know, more Parkinson's, more Alzheimer's, more strokes? And that, that you, I, I'll give that to Evan first. Uh, it's marketing. It's absolutely marketing. What happened was when you never heard about coconut oil until they outlawed trans fats. Once they outlawed trans fats, then you had to replace it with coconut oil. And so the food comp companies needed people to believe the coconut oil was good for them. So they just put out a bunch of books that said it's good for you with the evidentiary basis that's similar to countless other books that talk about the health benefits of non-beneficial things. Okay. Uh, any, any one of you two have any thoughts on that as well? Uh, Steve and Ray? Well, coconut oil is found in a lot of vegan foods, vegan ice creams, for instance, vegan cheeses. Uh, it's, it's found all over. And whenever, uh, the other day, I went into a health food store looking at their ice creams, and one of them had 15 grams of saturated fat per serving. And, and the servings are just a few tablespoons. And of course, when I flipped it over to see what was in it, one of the primary ingredients was coconut oil. So this is very widely used. And what happens, eat excess amount of saturated fats, American Heart Association recommends under 6% of your calories as saturated fat. So do I. And that would work out too on a normal uh, 1800 calorie day to about 12 grams of saturated fat per day. So if you read Steve, the I'm label- interrupt because that's what I spend all day saying. <laughs> Yeah. So, but that 15 grams per serving of ice cream where you're guaranteed to eat two servings is definitely on the high side. And are there any other plant-based foods that we, that, I mean, not the processed foods that are made with coconut oil, but are there any other um, plants that people are eating that don't realize that they have this problem? And I kind of want to tie it back into, you know, the diseases that, you know, that, I, that this panel is about, but is there, is there any other food, you know, or are, you know, the uh, the omega threes are fine, and you know, and you know, so like the nuts and the seeds generally are okay. Or is there something that we should be looking out for beyond just the coconut oil? And yeah, nuts and seeds are in, in general okay. Um, most of them have vitamin E, which is deficient. Ninety three percent of Americans don't even get the bare minimum fifteen milligrams per day of vitamin E. Ninety three percent. And so nuts and seeds can help to provide that much needed vitamin E, which is very protective to brain cell membranes, reducing brain cell destruction in the dopaminergic cells of the substantia nigra for Parkinson's disease and in all of the thinking areas like the hippocampus cells in the brain for Alzheimer's disease. So we really do need that vitamin E. The only two nuts that don't have vitamin E are coconuts and macadamia nuts. It's interesting because the vitamin E is you, it's made by the plants to protect its seeds from oxidation, from light, heat, and, ox and air. You know, this, this is what they do. Um, but like sunflower seeds have a tremendous amount of alpha tocopherol vitamin E because they are directly exposed to the sun and their seeds would not be viable if they didn't have it. But coconuts and macadamia nuts have husks as shells and they're protected from light, heat, and oxygen during their growth. So their seeds are still viable. Just an interesting note on why the plants make the vitamin E. 
Thank you. So, so what I'm hearing from, from you, Steve, is that the, there aren't like the nuts and the seeds are okay. It's really just the coconut oil as far as like the plant-based foods that, that, that plant-based eaters tend to eat. I, would I don't want to be the one to mention chocolate, uh, don't do it. Amounts of chocolate. You can, you can exceed your saturated fat intake, but small amounts of dark chocolate devoid of milk fat, I would suggest as being okay, not just to stay, uh, you know, <laughs> to keep people liking me, but also because I like it too. Mm -hmm. And any, any thoughts? Uh, I guess, Evan, you look like you have yeah. something to say. One, one caveat is that all naturally occurring fats are a mixture of many different fatty acids. So we think of coconut oil and palm oil as, as saturated fats, but there are some unsaturated fats in the oil that you would squeeze from, you know, coconut or, you know, palm fruit or whatever. All of those are a mixture. And even something like olive oil is often 15 to 20% saturated fat. Mm -hmm. So it's not just always the coconut oil and palm oil, although those are definitely the big factors in plant-based saturated fat. But high fat diets of all types, if there's enough, can really raise you above the saturated fat threshold and can create problems. Um, so, you know, if you're going to use these oils, try to use them reasonably. You know, don't don't think that uh, olive oil is great. Therefore, loads of olive oil as a primary source of calories in my diet is therefore great. So the poisons in yes. the dose. Yeah, the olive oil is not a whole plant food. Olives are. And olives, if you eat those, you get full, you get all the polyphenols in there, and they're really a healthy food. And when I analyzed the Mediterranean diet, I saw that most of the saturated fats came from olive oil. You had three servings a day in that type of a diet. And are, are, those, are, are people who eat the Mediterranean diet healthy because of the olive oil or despite the olive oil? <music>